Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, we're going to be doing a bit of a request. Been asked to take a look at a story in the BBC News about EU-based financial firms wanting to set up in the UK and the way the government are trying to spin this as a Brexit benefit. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So this won't be a long video. It's not really the sort of topic I would have done, but I was asked and it's Brexit related. And I thought, yeah, why not? Um, it's a simple enough story and equally simple to see the flaws. Uh, in the conclusions, that is. Not the story. I've got no doubts about the story at all. But the story, first of all, in brief, which I'll link below. So the news facts are that about 1,500 money managers, payment firms and insurers have applied to continue operating in the UK after Brexit. Now, this will involve building offices and running some of those operations from Britain, where the majority of those companies currently don't have representation in Britain. That's the news. Those are the facts of the matter. Now, how the BBC are allowing the government to spin this is as follows. One, this will be good news for all of the industries, all the parts of our economy that support these offices, from solicitors firms to sandwich shops. Secondly, and I'll quote this one because it's a bit of a corker, they suggest that financial services firms across Europe recognise London's potency as a global financial centre and want to be able to conduct business here. Now, I'm going to take that second one first because it's the most laughable and certainly easiest to disprove. Not that, that London is a major financial centre in the world, that's undeniable. If the reason for these officers moving to the UK was because of London's potency as a global financial centre, why did they not move beforehand? After all, like I said, there is absolutely no denying that London is one of the head honchos in the world, absolutely, when it comes to financial services. And although it's been declining quite severely since Brexit, nobody expects it to be anything other than still a major global centre for the foreseeable future. Why move now? I'll tell you why. These are companies who offer their services internationally, including in the UK. Now, if the EU and the UK do not agree an equivalence arrangement, which looks incredibly unlikely now, then those EU-based companies will not be able to continue to offer their services to UK-based clients. It's not about global access. If they needed London for global access, they'd have moved beforehand. London doesn't have more global market access now than it did before Brexit. In fact, it's less. Because of this extreme Tory Brexit, London now has less market access to the EU single market than New York or Tokyo, their main competitors. We are now less competitive than two of the other giants of the financial services world. So now, the problem precipitating this move is that these companies cannot provide financial services to UK customers. The solution? Simple. You move the portion of your business that provides for UK-based clients to the UK. These officers are not being set up in London to service the world. They would have moved before if that was the aim or that was needed. They're moving just for the UK customers on their books. Now let's consider the reverse direction because we also know that UK-based financial firms have been setting up offices in the EU in order to do the same. Obviously, without equivalence being granted, the only way they can provide services to EU-based clients is to have offices based in the EU. Now, let's consider this. And this has to be empirical because I don't have any figures. In terms of staffing and value, which way is going to see the most traffic? EU-based companies who need to move just enough staff to be able to provide their services to one country with a level of wealth about a fifth of the EU, or UK-based companies moving enough staff to provide their services to 27 different countries with a level of wealth collectively four times as much. Doesn't take a keen mathematical mind to see that the net effect is a drain from the UK, not towards it. Which brings me on to that first statement of the so-called Brexit benefit that of it being good news for other sectors of our economy, solicitors, accountants, and so on were mentioned. Is it good news for them? I mean, if the net effect is staff moving away from London, just because you get some moving into London, if the net effect is away, 
then the net effect will be lower demand for those services, won't it? No. This is just a complicit BBC covering up the failures of Brexit and acquiescing to the government in trying to actually make out that there are benefits to Brexit. After all, the way it is spun is that these officers would now be set up in London, you know, just because of Brexit. They wouldn't have been if it weren't for Brexit. And not just that, were it not for our extreme Tory Brexit as well? Sure thing. And were it not for that extreme Tory Brexit, we wouldn't have seen the exodus of services disappearing over the Brexit border over the past few years and hundreds of billions of euros of business and assets already transferred out of London to EU-based centres. So there we are. Wasn't that long, I hope. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.